Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're continuing the adventure, Wolf in Sheep's Clothing, huge shout out to the amazing author. Check out their details in the description below. Want to follow along? The link's right there for you. In this session, we'll be exploring chapters 8 to 13. Don't forget to smash that like button and drop a comment. Your engagement helps us out with the algorithm and means the world to us. Alright, let's jump into the story. They did what? Salem slapped a hand to her forehead as Lionheart finished relaying the tale to her in its entirety. She could scarcely believe it. Rather, she didn't want to. Because his story beggared belief. All this talk of might and magic and dead men walking. Were of gods walking the earth once more, it was too much to believe. For a wild moment, she actually considered crushing the seer before her and ending this altogether. She would throw herself from her throne, marshal her forces, and deal with the matter herself. Cinder and her cronies didn't know their arses from their elbows, but she had expected better of what's in Tyrion. For them to be dealt with in such a swift fashion, well, it irked her. But if the gods had returned, if they were working through vessels and avatars of their own, no, she dare not approach. One of them might be able to undo the curse laid upon her. She desired death all the same, but she wanted to drag this world down with her when she went. Dying alone accomplished nothing. Remnant must suffer as she suffered. A small distant parver knew she mustn't let this register on an emotional level. She'd lost pawns before, mangled minions in her rage when they failed her, that sort of thing. But never so many at once. She mustn't kill Lionheart, of course, no matter how his news might distress her. He was useful, one of the few remaining pawns she had left to her. No, Hazel he, his skills lay not on the field of battle, but more in the realm of subterfuge and espionage. Through him, she had ever learned of Ashpin's scheme without lifting a finger, even if Leonardo was little more than some stray peon. And so she turned her focus elsewhere. You're certain? Yes. Leonardo stumbled only a little over his words, his voice tinny through the seer's depths. Tyrion is dead, your grace. Arthur has been captured, and this amber girl is currently in her ascendancy. Many folk are outright worshipping her. Ashpin was inclined to brag. And yet you say, Summer Rose, Summer Rose, did Kalos in, her fingers drummed against the armrest of her throne. That is impossible. She did. There were many witnesses to the deed. It's so hard to find good help these days. Salem pinched the brow of her nose to forestall a sigh. And Cinder? I assume she's been executed by now. A pity. She'd have to find another maiden candidate, train him up all over again. What a waste. Well, tell me. Is it so? The little fool quivered. Salem bit back a snarl. Well, what is it? Well, she has been seen in Beacon, but you may not like what I'm about to tell you. Salem did not. No, not at all. The subsequent roar that followed shook her tower from top to bottom. Truly, only a mastermind could have dismantled her plan so easily. She refused to accept any other possibility. More fool, she. Hey, kids. Wanna see a dead body? Blake crashed backward in a dead faint. In that regard, she was lucky. She missed the madness that followed. Weiss took one look at Adam Taurus and screamed at the top of her lungs. Ruby and Yang, only just now returning to their dorm from a well-deserved ice cream break, took one look at the corpse blocking their doorway and screamed as well. Behind them, Crow heard his niece's shriek and started shouting himself. Really, it was just the sort of prank Naruto enjoyed. Shock and awe and all that. Really, it didn't get any better than this. He could have dispelled their confusion with a few quick words. Instead, Naruto just stood there, wearing Adam's body like a fine suit, arms crossed behind his head as he grinned like a loon. He didn't make any moves. He didn't have to. His presence was more than enough. Nothing like a good joke to get the blood pumping. And then someone ruined it for him. Quiet. Amber hollered over the chaos, eyes burning like twin embers. The rest of Team RWBY subsided with a whimper, looking like a pack of kicked puppies. Amber was having one of it. For crying out loud, Crow. She routed on Branwen with a glower. You already saw this back in the tower. Her hand slapped at his chest. Man up. Well, yeah, Beacon's resident uncle looked away with a grumble. But that's still creepy. He's missing an eye. How are you used to it? Ruby rounded on him and latched onto his arm. Uncle Crow. Don't tell me you're friends with this guy. He's a terrorist. Young dove on their uncle's shoulders. How long have you been keeping this from us? Naruto cackled. Oh, more than you think, less than you expect. Adam. At their feet, Blake began to come around at long last. Golden eyes fixed on Naruto, or rather, the body he was currently wielding. Weiss took one look at her, another at the body of a dead man, and couldn't decide which she dreaded more. Eventually, she gave up and flopped back onto her bed. Naruto felt a brief flash of pity for her. Clearly, she was the only sane one here, the sole voice of reason among her team. Unfortunately, it only made him want to break through the icy exterior all the more. This, Amber stabbed a finger at the grinning faunus before an argument could ignite, is not Adam Taurus. It's just his body. Now let's calm down before. But it looks just like him. Blake bolted back to her feet with a snarl and slammed her forehead against his. I don't believe you. Prove it. Naruto quirked a brow. 
and felt his new face settle into a scowl. Prove what? And how? I don't know. You, that is, just do something Adam wouldn't do. Slim's shoulders rolled in a shrug. All right, there were more than enough lingering memories in his worn-down body to make a fair guess of what Adam had been, of what he would and wouldn't do, of what he liked and disliked. An idea struck him, and a slow grin spread across his face. All right, that could work. And if he could cause a little chaos in the offing, well, he wouldn't say no. Amber must have read his intent, because she made a wild grab for him. He slipped past with a low laugh skirted an irate Blake and chose his victim. Crow frowned. You're not gonna. He was gonna. Naruto walked up to Weiss. Oh, sorry about this. The petite Shni blinked. Sorry about woman PH. Naruto kissed her dead on the mouth. Crow collapsed with the uproarious peal of laughter, dragging his nieces down with him. He didn't see what the big deal was. It was little more than a peck, really. Thankfully, it had said Shni springing back like he'd burned her. Merton Astor flashed out to ward off a follow-up attempt, opening a thin rent just across his nose. You fiend. Satisfied, he wiped his lips, grimacing a little once he realized he'd gotten blood on them. Or, do you need a better demonstration? Ruby beat him to it. Ew. No, no, no. I've seen enough. Blake blanched, wrenching her gaze away. You can't possibly be Adam. He would sooner hack off his lips than tongue wise. The involved party squawked. I am right here. Slash, there was no tongue, damn it. Both turned to glare at one another. Shut up. Slash you first. All right. Crow stood and wiped a mirthful tear from his eye. All right. I've had enough insanity for one day. You kids can handle things from here, right? Ruby clung onto his arm like a limpet. But Uncle Crew, what about training? You promised. No, nope, buts, he nudged her into Yang's arms. I'll stop by to give you a few lessons tomorrow, and I'm sure Summer will get involved too. Naruto saw the precise moment Ruby's brain rebooted. Her silver eyes grew misty. It still doesn't feel real. Eh, tell me about it. Yang sniffled only a little. Oh, feels nice. Where did mom run off to anyway? Crow pursed his lips. You don't want to know. A door on Patch creaked open. Taeyong's jaw clicked open with an audible pop. Summer. Hey, lover boy. Miss me. He didn't have time for anything more than that before his wife tackled him to the floor. Like I said, you don't want to know. I'll tell you when you're older. Oh. Naruto looked away as Crow began to bid his goodbyes, but Ruby and Yang clung on. Ringing more promises of training for him, Naruto looked on and felt a curious tugging sensation in what passed for his host Blackheart. Right. Summer. He'd forgotten all about her. Ruby and Yang had lost their mother long ago. Summer Rose would still be lost if not for the brothers and their meddling. He couldn't begrudge the girls for that, but it did nothing to lessen the sting. Must be nice, having a parent brought back to life. Not that he know what that felt like. All right, all right. Yang thrashed her way upright, demanding his attention. Oh, I get Blake, but why show the rest of us this? This jerk, Amber elbowed him, thought it would be funny to spook you. Lilac eyes flashed red. Is that so? Well, it was out. Naruto coughed and found himself bent double as Amber kicked his shin. Spoil sport. Let me have this. In any case, we only came here this is a courtesy. Amber temporized with a wave of a hand, reaching down to rub his back with the other. Naruto told me Blake was a him. She coughed into a fist and looked away with rosy cheeks. Involved with Taurus. We didn't want to cause any confusion for what comes next. Blake's bow twitched. Wait, what comes next? Oh, nothing important. Naruto's grin resembled Adam's just a little too much for everyone's liking. Just destabilizing the white fang in Mistral and staging a hostile takeover. You wouldn't be interested. Her ears perked up. Tell me more. Yang groaned. Now he's done it. Bastard went and flipped her switch. Ruby cocked her head. So, you gonna use that body to fight bad guys? Is that what you mean? Naruto corked his unbranded eye at Weiss. The Shni hissed at him for a bed. Well, impression made there. See? The Wraith looked to Amber, unable to hide the spark of righteous pride that followed. Told you, they'd be interested. Amber had argued long and hard against this course of action, but in the end Ashbin overruled her. Adam's body, the fact that many thought he'd all but risen from the dead, it was simply too good an opportunity to pass up. They knew Salem had her hooks in the White Fang, or plans for them at the very least. What better way to root them out than to infiltrate the organization itself? That and it was a chance to get back at the White Fang for launching an assault on Beacon. Maybe it was the whole being dead bit, but he was still feeling mighty vengeful about that. We're not leaving yet, of course, he couldn't help but notice the way Blake flinched when he spoke. It's just something to consider. If you want to help. The loudspeakers blared overhead, cutting him short. Would Naruto and Amber please report to my office? Ashpin's voice ran through, sounding a touch strained. Oh, I repeat, Naruto and Amber, please report to the headmaster's office. Again. He all but flung up his arms. We just got out of there. Let us advance the plot already, damn it. Amber slapped her forehead. Children, the lot of you. On second thought, belay that. Ashpin's voice came back immediately and this time there could be no mistaking his harried tone. She's headed your way. Just, 
They heard him swallow. Try not to kill one another. I'll be there in a moment. Everyone exchanged a baffled look. Eh, who are we waiting for? They soon had their answers, for the door crashed open, nearly swatting Naruto in the back. Me. Cinder Fall strode in, grinning from ear to ear, like the cat that caught the canary and slaughtered its entire species. She walked into their midst hale and healthy and healed, devoid of her injuries. Utterly unafraid, Amber hissed and recoiled, looking like she'd been shot. Ruby wasn't far behind. Get behind me. The Elder Huntsman lurched forward and shoulder-checked Cinder aside, physically slamming the madwoman into a wall with Harbinger's hilt. The former maiden caught the naked edge with one hand, smiling in the face of certain death. Aura sparked wildly. Weiss flailed off her bed even as Yong and Blake went for their weapons. My, my, the madwoman laughed, actually laughed, at the lot of them. Oh, how rude. Is this any way to treat a guest? You're no guest. Naruto yanked Adam's blade free from its sheath, wilt escaping blush with a raspy of angry air. Cinder batted it aside with a lazy swat of her free hand. It was the pebble that started the avalanche. Weapons flashed free one after the other. Cylinders clicked into place. Edges came down around her throat, hemming the criminal in where she stood. And yet still she showed not a single sign of fear. Amber rammed her staff. Who let you out? Why your dear headmaster, of course. Cinder's smile didn't falter in the least, seemingly ignorant of the dust crystal even now seething against her ribs. He all but tripped over himself once I told him of my new master. I'm here with his blessing, among others. There was something about the way she said that word. After all, to make matters worse, she all but confirmed their suspicions a heartbeat later. He wouldn't dare refuse the envoy of a dark god. Ember went white. No. Oh yes. Cinder preened. Oh, care to guess my patron's name? Naruto frowned. Surely the god of darkness wouldn't do something like that. No, he probably would. He was chaos incarnate after all. His frown redoubled, eyes shimmering with heat. Envoy or not, you can still die. I don't trust a word you say. Impudent boy. Golden eyes narrowed upon him. Dead men shouldn't speak ill of the living. Don't worry, he snarled. You'll be joining me in a minute. Crow's scroll rang. The dorm went silent. Cinder's smile turned positively predatory. Oh, aren't you going to get that? He growled. It can wait. Her grin grew. Can it? With a long-suffering sigh, Bramwin pulled one hand away from Harbinger's hilt and stabbed a hand into his pocket. Cinder pointedly lowered her hands as he did. The huntsman flicked a quick glance down, only to scowl at the caller ID labeled within. Ashpin's face stared back at him for all of a moment before he rammed it against his ear. Yeah, he snarled. Us? What the? She is. Really? Well, of course not. His brow furrowed further. The kids are pissed. I really don't think that's a good idea. Feel free to try. Cinder spread her arms wide. As I said, I've been blessed. You cannot kill me. And besides, we're on the same side. No. Naruto twitched and Adam's body responded accordingly. Cinder's head slipped from her shoulders and struck the floor with a wet thunk. Ruby and the rest cried out and scrambled back at the sudden brutality, to no avail. Her skull turned to ash a moment later, wafting away in a manner not unlike that of a grim. Shadows stemmed from her ruined neck, before their very eyes, she simply regrew what she'd lost. It didn't even take a minute. Crow, gagged. Oh, that is complete bullshit. Since when did that happen? My mistress cannot die. Golden eyes sought Amber's as the last of her face restored itself. Our benefactor sought to, what's the saying? She touched a thumb to her chin. Ah, yes. He wished to even the playing field, such as it was. We're on the same side. Her fingers snapped but once, conjuring up a sphere of vicious violet flame. What need have I for the might of a maiden when I possess the gifts of a god? But you're a murderer. What of it, little rose? The former maiden blinked. Oh, a slow, lazy smile spread across her pale face, darkening it with bleak glee. I'm sorry. Were you under the impression I felt guilty about my crimes? I'll kill you. Amber hissed the words through clenched teeth. I'll absolutely kill you. You'll pay for what you've done. You won't get away with this. Do try, dears. Cinder made a show of inspecting the fingers of her restored left hand. You might do better than most, but you'll fail. Naruto exhaled in a short, sharp plume of breath. He and Amber exchanged a slow, measured look between themselves. Cinder's grin grew. Go ahead, Tra. You'll learn your place in the pecking order, one way or another. Well, that tore it. As one, the duo nodded. Cinder quirked a brow at the sudden capitulation, but made no attempt to stop them when they stepped forward. Wholly at her ease with all the grace of a reborn phoenix, she didn't even try to defend herself against what came next. A hand closed around her throat, wrenching her away from the wall and off to one side. She barked a laugh. Indeed, she was still smiling when the unlikely duo tackled her through a window. Together, the three of them crashed into the courtyard below with the fury of a thousand storms. Crow leaned down, peered through the gaping aperture, and swore softly. I don't get paid enough for this. Welcome home, Adam. Aren't you supposed to be dead? Where my demise was greatly exaggerated, high leader. Naruto knelt and did his best not to grin with Adam's face. He didn't quite succeed. 
As you can see, I survived the attack on Beacon. His lips twitched just a bit, enough to be played as his own arrogance. More than that, I thrived. Those keen, golden orbs never left him. Is that so? Yes, Mime. He raised his gaze. I got better. Sienna reclined upon her throne with a frown. Yes, so I've heard. But how do I know you're not an imposter? Amber swallowed once, willed herself to keep looking straight ahead, and absolutely nothing else. She forced her body to be still, to trust in their disguises, to believe in the plan they'd laid out. Easier said than done. Of course it was. Her heart raced in a fitful beat, like a wild colt trying to break out of its pasture. With each passing moment, she was aware of the guns trained on them, the keen eyes watching them, the high vaulted ceiling above with its many alcoves, from which still more of their enemies watched. Ironically, none of those things really bothered her. No, it was a young woman before her that had her feeling things. Good gods, Sienna Khan was absolutely stacked. Ark, stop. Bad brain. She shot a thread of thought at Naruto, where he stood beside her. Why did I let you talk me into this nonsense again? Because we're besties. Naruto didn't turn Adam's head to do so, and acknowledge her now would have given his guys away. It did nothing to sever the link between the two of them. Even at this distance, she could see through his eyes, feel his words against her neck like a feather's brush. Amber glowered at him for it. Fortunately, her mask hid said glower, and most of her face. It did not, however, hide her fear. Infiltrate the White Fang, they said. It'll be easy, they said. Bullshit, she said. All this subterfuge was stressing her the hell out. At least Cinder wasn't anywhere near here. That was her sole consolation in this madness. If she saw fall now, she'd try to kill her, magic be damned. Just thinking of that wretched fire which threatened to send her once orderly thoughts into disarray all over again. Where did she run off to anyway? I didn't pay attention after our scuffle. Naruto shrugged. She said something about settling scores for the God of Darkness. Which means she's up to something. Why so silent, Adam? Sienna's voice cut through their link. Did that girl cut out your tongue as well? She sneered. I'm waiting for an answer. Naruto tilted his head as he stood, and Adam's body complied, moving seamlessly. Amber couldn't help but shudder at the sight of it. What more do I need give you? His voice emerged in a low laugh. Shall I go out and slaughter some humans? He spread his arms wide, looking to those of the Fong. Bring back a Shinee's head? That was a very good act he was putting on. If she didn't know better, she would have thought it real. The way he held himself, the fanaticism in his voice. It reminded her of a raging bull, ready to trample all before him. Not for the first time, she found herself glad of Adam's death. The world was better off without his ilk. Tempting, Sienna's fingers drummed against the armrest of her throne. But I'd rather have you explain your actions at Beacon. I regret them, of course. Naruto changed gears instantly. I was led astray by my passion. Astray? The High Leader absolutely hissed. Is that all you have to say for yourself? Adam's head tilted. Not really. I've had time to think, you see. Amber shivered at his tone. Did not. Excuse me. They say everyone wears a mask in life. Be it a smile, a scowl, or even nothing at all. Everyone hides their true face from someone or something. We all have our own demons. For one Aruto Uzumaki, truer words had never been spoken sometimes. Amber found herself wondering what he might have been like when he was alive. If death had simply unfettered him from his morals or if he was actually enjoying his second life. Or worse still, if possessing this mortal shell had influenced him somehow. Naruto wore Adam's skin well. Played the part well. Almost too well. Was he enjoying himself, she wondered? Would she enjoy what was to come next? In a single seamless movement, Naruto sprang to his feet. Wilt cleared its sheath with a sullen rasp, its blood-red blade swiping into the air. Sienna Khan, his lone eye flashed. I challenge you for leadership of the White Fang. A startled murmur pushed through the crowd. Sienna sprang to her feet, hissing like the tigress she was. You dare. I do. Naruto grinned with Adam's face. Do you accept my challenge, a coward? There was only one answer she could possible. Give. Just as they'd planned. All across Remnant, the world continued to change. Oh, yeah. Summer tapped her daughter's forehead once. Oh, again. Ruby dubbed her mother in a whirl of red cloth. She'd make her proud. She swore it. This was power. This was strength. This, this was got it. Cinder felt it thrum through her veins as she stalked her prey through the woods, hounding his every step. She was untouchable. Invincible. The gifts given her by the God of Darkness threatened to overwhelm her. Such were their purity. They were a heady flame dash, one that burned brighter than her namesake ever could. Golden eyes trail with violet flames, newfound might aching to be unleashed upon any who tried to challenge her. She had the power to unmake the world at her fingertips. Her will could scar the world thrice over and come back for more. Truly, the might of a mere maiden was nothing compared to this. Nor was her for. Hazel, oh dear Hazel, she crooned her victim's name aloud. Won't you come out to play? By her god's instruction, it had been the merest of things to hunt down the last of Salem's agents. It only made sense that Hazel would be lurking about Mistral, seeking spring. With what's captured in Tyrion deceased, Oshpin would be on high alert in any case. 
No mere assassin would be enough to fell him. Not with Ironwood about. And so, he would no doubt favor a more direct approach. Subtlety had never been his forte. Poor, poor Hazel. He thought himself so smart, so clever, oh so justified in seeking vengeance for his fallen sister. But the truth, and so many things, had been revealed unto her by the God of Darkness. Salem had orchestrated that very event that led to Gretchen's demise. Of course, she had. She had ever been, and always would be, a manipulative witch. Her hand flicked out, incinerating a vast sway of the forest. Timber splintered and cracked, the ground baking to clay beneath her heat. She took a moment to glory in it all, this sweet destruction. A small smile stretched across her lips. There's no need to hide, she called out through the fire and the flames. I won't bite him much. Had she been a kinder soul, she might have revealed such a truth to him, sought to win him to their side. Cinderfall? Kind? Huh? What did she care for such things? He was beneath her. She was a god, and he a dull creature, thus she would not be bullied by the likes of. Wham! Clenched knuckles flew at her out of the dark, ready to strike her head from her shoulders. Cinder caught it with a lazy palm and pulled him close. There you are. Your pride blinds you, Cinder. Undaunted, Hazel raised a free hand, shimmering with lightning dust-empowered fist. You've spouted your last insult, traitor. It's time to die. I'll try to make it painless. Cinder threw her head back and laughed. Oh, that's just precious. By all means, tra. Fall to the might of the gods. A fireball crashed into Hazel's chest and sent him spinning. The gods. He stumbled upright with a scowl. You're bluffing. They don't. Of course, the gods exist. A peal of dark laughter leaped from her lips. Oh, did you expect anything less? They're gods. They never play fair. And now they've been given the perfect excuse to turn Remnant into their own personal playground. Again, she flung up her free. Honestly, I'm surrounded by idiots. And you, her eyes narrowed. You can just die. Inability to feel pain did not translate into invulnerability. Shadow burst from her fingertips, splitting him in twine. Cinder scoffed and stepped over his smoldering corpse. Puny mortal. Failure. 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 The word hammered away at what passed for a god's brain, driving a pounding migraine between his temples. For the first time in eons, he felt something akin to anger. He was immortal, transcendent, eternal. He knew secrets that would make the universe shudder. His was a power no mortal could hope to defy. He could shatter mountains, reshape worlds in his image. The very universe was his to bend to his whim. And yet for all this power, he had been bested. Not once, not twice, but thrice now. Blasted mortals. He saw them now in his mind's eyes, watched as their insidious influence and that of his brother began to spread across the world like a plague. They'd claimed a white fan for themselves now. He knew the next part of their scheme. This would not stand. It mustn't stand. The girl who lived and the boy who refused to die. Would that he could simply wipe them from the face of the remnant and be done with them entirely. Yet he couldn't. Like his younger brother, the God of Light was bound by rules. Father had made them as such, created them, and then departed for the stars, leaving them behind. Those tenets bound him and darkness alike. Rules that could be bent at times, but never broken. They were forbidden from destroying any world they created. Their word was law. Once a pact was made, they must see it through or risk certain doom. To defy the rules outright risked complications or worse, attracting his attention. Even now, millennium after his departure, he didn't dare draw their creator's ire, assuming he still existed. In the same vein, Summer Rose had failed him. He had brought that woman back to life for a singular purpose. And still she failed. In hindsight, he might have phrased things poorly. Shed their blood, he'd said. She did as he'd asked, slipped through his grasp with a clever bit of tea he held no power over her now. The terms of their pact were complete. More fool he... And so tonight, the God of Light selected a new champion. Someone better. Someone loyal. Someone strong. Kill Amber Autumn and Naruto Uzumaki. He told them, do not stop until they are ash in the wind. Do this, swear yourself to me, and I will grant your heart's desire. He waited for their compliance, and when it came, sent a mental command their way. No more victories. No more triumphs. Only ash in the wind. Go, my warrior. There's work to be done. Again, a voice sighed behind him. How unlike you to bend the rules, brother. Light rounded in the void, knowing who he would find there. Have I? A golden arm slashed through the air. It was you who began this farce with that bet, not I. Let us have an end to it. Sure enough, his not-so-beloved younger brother stared back, arms crossed before his chest. He looked taller than before, brighter, stronger for all the worship he'd been given. For an awful moment, Light felt a pinprick of fear. Had he gone about this all wrong? In pursuing those two mortals above all else, he neglected his own followers, what few there were. And his brother looked oh so smug. Well, what say you? Darkness regarded him with a pitying sigh. There will be an end. Just not the one you expect. Enough games. Salem opened her eyes. 
Fine, she all but snarled the word. I'll do it myself. Well, here we are. Naruto hovered before the vault. Motes of golden light drifted over a large platform, resting over a deep chasm. The path on said platform said funnel towards the relic chamber's doorway, featuring three cyan circles on the ground with an ornate symbol in each of them. They lit up one by one as he floated past, illuminating the chamber in ethereal glow. The end of the platform features the door to the relic chamber, an elaborate orange doorway situated in a rock wall. Behind it is a large tree with glowing orange flowers. The doorway itself was constructed out of golden fans layered on top of each other, decorated with a floral pattern. It felt strange standing, floating, here as he was now. He'd already beaten Sienna handily. There wasn't much to tell beyond that he left her alive. Adam's body was strong. His spirit was stronger. She wasn't. It ended over in an instant. Now Adam Taurus led the Mistral sect to the White Fang, with all ties severed to Salem. Eh, she was probably twisting with rage right about now. Better yet, with Amber guarding his corpse host tonight, he was free to act as pleased. Another thing he'd noticed, in the beginning he'd been all but bound to her, unable to leave her side for even a moment. Then, he was a move a little further each day. But never far. No. Amber was miles away, and he could barely even feel the link that bound them. He would likely still perish if she did, fall if she fell, but for the first time in a long time, he felt free. His destiny was his own again. Ashpin had promised him the lamp for his services against Salem. Tonight, he was acting on that promise. Here goes nothing. His spectral form slipped through the gilded vault door with a faint shimmer. There was resistance, of course. Midway through, he felt the magics of the door tug at him, catching at his shoulders like a spiderweb. Dozens of gossamer thin threads wound their way about his soul, trying to hold him back, but he lacked a proper form for them to properly impede. His spirit, although separated from his body, burned bright as ever. The magic melted away like so much morning mist around him. And then he was through. A vast swathe of desert greeted his eyes and he squinted against harsh sunlight. The hell? Where am I? We opened his eyes, he found himself somewhere else entirely, stood in another dimension altogether. Sand and sunlight, as far as the eye could see. Before him, three circular stone platforms led toward a tiny stone pedestal, above which an eerie item levitated. Keen blue eyes found the lamp perched upon its pedestal. Distantly, he recalled Ashbin's words to him. Well, in for a penny, as they said. He drifted forward, coming to half only stones throw away from the lamp. Pallid fingers reached for it and passed through. Lips pursed in a frown. Jin. Baleful blue smoke spilled out into the air to take the shape of a striking young woman. Her eyes were bright, hair dark, and her skin was shade of the ocean itself, her bare body adorned in chains and absolutely nothing else. Naruto felt the beginnings of a crooked grin pluck at the corner of his spectral mouth. Well, I think I just fell in love. My, my startled blue eyes looked around back at him, wide with surprise for the first time in an age. This is new. Someone has called me. I hear you, yet I cannot see you. Am I imagining things? All that joy turned to ash in his mouth. No, 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 no. She had to see him. She must. He was right here. Hey, he grit his teeth in a growl. Uh, listen, I'm over here. You blind or something. Where are you? The genie craned her neck in the opposite direction. Is this a trick of some sort? He couldn't fail here. Not when he'd come so far. You really can't see me, can you? Naruto pursed his lips and floated around her. You look at me, hear me, but can't see me. His brow furrowed. All you see is a ghost, a wraith, a wandering spirit. Do you have any idea what that's like? Despite his utmost efforts, his voice broke with emotion. I'm not gone. I'm right here. Standing in front of you. Look at me. A hand waved before her face. See me. A hand blurred up and caught him by the wrist. Pale fingers found substance. Where there was none to be hand. Her eyes snapped toward him. Shimmered with light. As your orbs met stark cerulean. I see you, she whispered. Naruto's heart skipped a beat. For someone to touch him, the real him, was more than unexpected. It surprised him, startled him, shook him to his very core. Before his very eyes, she seemed to shrink, going from a towering blue giant to a woman of normal height. You have come seeking answers, my spectral friend. To remain this era, Jin reclined before him with a languid smile. What knowledge do you seek? Naruto gulped. There were so many things he could ask her. How to get back to his world, how to bring about world peace, how to end the grim. The list went on and on. But there was one question he'd been nursing for quite some time now, since the very beginning of this madness. One inquiry above all. One hope. One prayer he'd held close to his undead heart every night. Anything else could wait. He asked. And so she told him. She told him everything. Raven Branwen scowled at the ceiling of her tent. Somewhere, somehow, someway she inexplicably felt forgotten. But I'm the spring maiden. I'm part of the plot. They can't just ignore me. Can they? Rise and shine. Ambrosius opened his eyes and gazed upon a pale specter. The specter gazed back at him with a cheeky grin, arms crossed for his chest. This was a joke, right? Surely it must be. 
Ambrosius scrubbed his eyes with one hand, then blinked for good measure. Once, twice, thrice. The scene before him didn't change. If anything, the young man standing before him became even more annoyed. Blue eyes narrowed upon him beneath blonde bangs, eyes burdened by impossible knowledge, yet they did not flinch in the face of his confusion. Stop that, the newcomer sighed. Yes, I'm real. Yes, I'm the one that summoned you. So let's move on, shall we? Easier said than done. Ambrosius was a being of knowledge, life, creation. Death was anathema to him as the ground unto the sky. He did not fear it. He rejected it. The very core concept of his being had been built upon ensuring mankind's survival. Before creation, there must come destruction. He scorned such beliefs. Creation must always come first. So to see a man who was already dead, a man who had somehow slipped into the vault in spite spite of all its defenses, well, it was something of a shock. This man was not alive. Nor was he dead. His very being was a paradox. Well, well, the genie forced a grin to his face still, somewhat taken aback by the sight in the vault before him. Seems someone has come to engage my creative wiles. His gaze shifted, only just now noting the familiar blue wraith behind his summoner. And is that my dear sister I spy? Why it was. Hello, brother. Jin graced him with a small smile. I'm sorry for the interruption. This won't take but a moment. It certainly seemed so. All right. I'll bite. How did you two get in here? I'm pretty much an unbound ghost at this point. The blonde mirrored his movements with a grin. Just took me a while to realize my potential. I can go anywhere I want. See anything. And if Jin could see me, well, slim shoulders rolled in a careless shrug. It makes sense that you could too. Ergo, I can interact with you. That's fair. Ambrosius quelled a sudden pang of dread. And you knew my name, how? Huh? I asked the one question no one thought to ask. His grin said it all. Oh, you're not going to tell me what you asked, are you? No. I'm afraid the knowledge has driven him quite mad. Jin agreed. Best do what he says and was your hands of him. Not mad. Wild blue eyes rounded on the lesser spurt. I'm not, I'm not crazy. He touched a hand to his forehead and reeled for a moment. I'm just tired of this. Tired of the gods, of being a pawn in everyone's game, of everything. So I'm going to end things. As you say, Ambrosius leaned back, still ill at ease. And your second question? Naruto's grin grew manic. Right, right. Ambrosius swirled away, unwilling to face it over long. While I'm thrilled to have this little family reunion, I'm afraid I have to ask a question of my own. How is she? An azure finger indicated his sister, even here in the first place. Pretty sure I don't see a lamp at your waist. The grin became something horrific. Jin, palmed her face. Don't say I didn't warn you. You did. See, I took a bit of a gamble. Naruto spread his arms wide, spectral limbs grasping at nothing. If I could pass through the vault door, so could she. I just gave her a nudge. He raised a palm then, a lone finger, shimmering with ghastly light. Her lamp still sitting back in Haven, but it's empty. Anyone who tries to use it can summon her back, of course, but without the Spring Maiden. Realization crashed down upon the creator in a scalding wave. They really were breaking all sorts of rules here. What was to stop him from doing the same? Do you intend the same for me? Hardly. Naruto rolled his eyes. Oh, you're going to create a new body for me. A powerful body with all my power intact, just like the last. Well, as close as you can get it, I suppose. His voice peaked, rising with a laugh. A form my spirit can hop in and out of it will. Once you do, I'm taking the staff out of here. He really had gone mad. Did death do this to man? Unfettered by conscience or morality, was this what you became? This was greed. He couldn't see it as anything else. Even if the young man thought he was being altruistic, his actions here would have far-reaching consequences. You mortals, he sighed. Always reaching for something you don't have. I disagree. Naruto lurched forward, slamming a spectral forehead against his. Everyone wants something. Some might want to bring back someone that they've lost. Some might want money. Or they might want to protect the world. These are all common things people want. Even as a ghost, his eyes blazed red. Things that their hearts desire. Greed may not be good, but it's not so bad either. Greed is for more than just money and power. Everyone wants something they don't have. And what do you want? Lots of things. The spectral shinobi drifted down to the floor, planted his feet, and raised his chin. I want peace. I want a wife. Maybe a few little blue children once all this is over. Possibly a harem. Haven't decided yet. Ambrosius corked a brow. Ahem. The scarlet-faced Jin finally found her voice again. Don't look at me. He decided all this. What's wrong with the color blue? Naruto frowned. I think they'd look rather nice. Ambrosius palmed his face. You do realize Atlas will fall if you do this. The silence that followed and the lack of concern on the boy's face troubled him more than he cared to admit. Without time to prepare, it's going to plummet instantly. There will be no warning. Hundreds will die. Thousands, actually. It's been accounted for. Whiskered cheeks twitched in a smile. Amber and the others are going to be furious with me for meddling, but this is for the best. I have a plan. 
If this body is as powerful as you say, it might not last. Did that plan involve innocent deaths? He certainly hoped not. You'll be getting exactly what you ask for. I have faith in you. Naruto beamed. You won't let me down. This boy was too pure for his own good. They say spirits are wild with their emotions, devoid of restraint. Perhaps that was true. Maybe this was his real self. All morals stripped away by his first death. Perhaps he was just putting on a brave face. Alright, I'll need schematics for this so-called body of yours. You already have them. The spectral being tapped a hand to his forehead. Oh, they're all right here in my brain. That doesn't help me. Oh, but it does. His brow furrowed when his fellow spirit made to protest. You see, I still have one last question left, courtesy of Jin. Wonder how I should use it. You misunderstand. Ambrosius temporized with a raised palm, assuming she shows me enough of the history of your people and you for me to make a proper replica. It's not that simple. The palm rose, conjuring a tiny replica of the young man before him. If I put you back into a body, you'll be corporeal again. Mortal. If it dies, you die. Is that so? Blue eyes sparked, and he suspected he'd just fallen into a trap. Which means you won't be able to undo it, because doing so would kill me. Which, last I checked, you're not allowed to do. He had a bad feeling about this. Correct? Good. Because I need you, he hooked a thumb over his shoulder, to make Jin a body once this is done. She jolted and his grin reminded Ambrosius of a sneering fox. Make it just as powerful as mine. And I know precisely who I want you to base it on. Who might that be? Naruto told him. He spent five whole minutes telling him. Uh, uh, uh. In the end, Ambrosius relented. Screw it. Why not? This was as great a challenge as he'd ever receive. Exploiting such a loophole might very well anger the God of Light, but damn if it wasn't enticing. He couldn't recall the last time someone had come to him with so great a task as this. Jin's knowledge encompassed many things, other worlds, universes, even periods of time. Creation and knowledge. Paired together, they could do much. It was the Arya. And this, this would change the world. You've thought this through, I'll give you that. As your hands reared back, cracking his knuckles. All right, speak your question, and let's get this show on the road. Just a second, Naruto sat down and crossed his legs beneath him. Jean mirrored the motion, kneeling before him. Pale azure hands rose to sup his cheeks. Her forehead touched his. Their eyes closed in unison. Ambrosius coughed at the sight and looked away, feeling oddly like a voyeur in his own home. The blonde's breath hitched once. Just once. His only sign of fear. Jin, you already know what my question is. Show him. This will be your final question. She sounded almost sad to say it. There can be no more after this. Are you certain? His eyes opened to meet hers. I am. Do it. Before I change my mind. She smiled here at the last. As you wish, dear boy. In a flash, the world became glorious light. Ambrosius saw it all and gasped. Knowledge. So much of it. Past and present flowed into his mind like a film. Scenes funneling to a single point. He saw things he'd never dreamed of. Never known to be possible. And how could he? Creation was his forte, not knowledge. He knew little of other worlds. Nor the wonders they contained. But he did now. And as he saw, he understood. His sister was most thorough. Jin made certain he saw it all. The birth of Chakra and those of the Shinobi that followed. How it worked. How it focused. All of it. Every bit of it. He saw gods and monsters, the death of one way, and the birth of another. And there, at the end of it all, he saw one standing head and shoulders above the rest. Replicate that? He wasn't sure he could. But he would try. Alright, I can work with this. Atlas fell. Harriet Bree wasn't sure why or how. Only that it did. It was a sudden thing, less a controlled ascent than a rapid crash from on high, like a star struck by the hand of an angry god. There was no word or warning. No spark nor sound to predate the sudden disaster. One moment it hung safely secure in the sky, a shining symbol for all of Mantle to see, a silent giant shielding them in its shadow. In the next, it simply fell. While she was here, down in Mantle. Today just wasn't her day. She could have run, she could have screamed, could have done any number of things. Instead she froze. She heard the screams of countless bystanders. Their last desperate cries took root in her heart and paralyzed her where she stood. Fear anchored her legs to the ground and she had all of an instant to shield her face with one arm, to close her eyes. And then it stopped. Heart hammering in her ears, pulse bounding, the specialist dared to raise her gaze. A bit of dirt rained down on her head. Harriet looked up, cowering in the shadow of her doom, expecting the world to black out at any moment, followed by the crushing pain of pain never came. Not one iota of it. Nice one, Jin. A distant voice laughed. Maybe we cut it a little too close for comfort, though. Our apologies, another voice echoed the first. Oh, we didn't mean to frighten you. Harriet looked up and beheld her savior. Wreathed in saffron and black with a series of strange black spheres hovering from his back, a young man burned bright in afternoon sky in blatant defiance of gravity. A single arm was outstretched above his head to hold the weight of the city at bay. The other clasped the hand of a blue-skinned woman, whose free palm worked to support his. Each glowed with power, 
their bodies all but shimmering with golden blue light. Together, they did the impossible and held Atlas at bay. Harriet's jaw clicked open. What the actual hell? Hello there, the young man grinned down at her. Where do you want us to set this thing down? I'm afraid it's rather heavy. Jin mirrored his smile. Shall we just put it in the crater? When faced with such strength, there could only be one response. It was only natural, really. Harriet fainted. What do you mean he was an atlas? Was as in he is no longer there. Ashpin sighed into his scroll. I don't know what else to tell you, Amber. He was there with the lamp, took the staff, kidnapped specialist Bree, and sent Atlas down into the crater. Then he left again. He felt a migraine coming on in the pause that followed. James is quite cross at the moment. We had to sedate him to prevent him from doing anything, Rush. A distant roar from the infirmary drew a wince from Glinda at his side. Crow grimaced. Yeah, saw that one coming. All right. More than a little cross. Ashpin deftly reached over to snatch Branwen's flask from his belt, heedless of the man's protest, and knocked it back, draining it down to last drop. All the alcohol in the world wasn't enough right now. He wanted to be absolutely blitzed before this day was over. Assuming there was another day after this. It was looking less and less likely by the hour. Eyewitness reports pegged him in vacuo shortly thereafter. He continued tersely. He left with a sword. I'm not sure how. Perhaps he found and coerced the maiden there into doing his bidding. I suspected he simply blasted his way through the vault. Amber gulped through the call. He can do that now. He has a body again, dear girl. I'd be more worried about what he cannot do. I suspect it's a short list. Really, the boy's plan was obvious and terrifying in the same measure. Whatever his question to Jin had been, it clearly broken him. This wasn't the sort of plan one thought up on the spot. It reeked of madness and desperation. Something was driving him forward at a reckless pace. A wise man would have taken the crown first, followed by the other relics. That he hadn't boded poorly. He'd hit Mistral first and as of now had all the powers of knowledge, creation, and destruction at his beck and call. What was choice compared to that? He didn't tell you about this. Any of this. The maiden didn't speak. Her silence was answer enough. She hadn't known then. Thank the gods for small mercies. It also meant Naruto was coming here. He must. If he planned to unite the relics and summon the gods back to Remnant. The alternative was concerning. Why else would he gather three out of the four? Did he plan to face Salem with three? No, surely not. That was madness, even for one such as him. Surely he'd be here any moment now. He would be. He must be. That boy is a hero. Or at least he thinks himself one. Tell me, what would you do with a power such as his, if you believe you were doing the right thing? It went unspoken. He'd call the gods down, light at the least, and try to fight them, the rash little fool. Amber's gasp was proof enough of her innocence. No, he wouldn't. Ashbin turned a forlorn gaze to the door. I'm afraid he would. The elevator crashed open. Ashbin drew his cane. Taeyong Shaolong waltzed in with a smile. It faded when he saw their weapons. Did I miss something? You look tired, brother. Why don't you rest? The god of light crashed to the floor, wasted and gasping for air. He tried to marshal his strength. Summon his might and lash out to no avail. Weak? So weak. Why was he so weak? He didn't understand. One moment he'd been preparing to enact a great and holy vengeance upon that blasted blonde mortal, and the next he'd fell to the ground. He looked down, faceless visage gone stormy, as he behind the great gaping tear in his chest. This treachery will not be forgiven. His attack had come without warn or warning, the blackest of betrayals. He'd never seen it coming. Gods could not bleed in the traditional sense of the word, yet countless escaped his wound nonetheless. With each passing moment, he lost yet more of his strength. Even as he tried to rise, a foot planted itself on his back and slammed him down to the ground. Treachery. Satisfaction was writ over his younger sibling's face. It was you who betrayed me. And I've had enough violet arms spread wide. It is time for a new era, brother. He glowered up at him, fury on his brow. And which era is that? That sly-horned head tilted. Mine, of course. Have you taken leave of your senses? On the contrary, I found them. When the older brother tried to rise, the young grabbed him by the horns and held him fast. The mortals are no longer yours to toy with. Moreover, you've proven yourself incapable of honoring our agreement. And I've grown tired of your... His wrists twisted, snapping those gilded horns off at their base. Interference. Those same horns reversed course in darkness's hands and stabbed down into light's chest, worsening his wounds. I cannot die. Defiant to the end, he pushed himself up on a ruined arm. I will be reform in time. Be it decades or eons, it matters not. How many times do you intend to kill me? Until you learn... The god of darkness exhaled, slowly, patiently. Unlike you, I intend to work with these new gods. The ghost of a smile crossed his dark visage. After all, how happy will they be once I tell them of your demise? Light reared up and tackled him. Oh, your arrogance blinds you, as does your paranoia. Strong hands wrestled him down as they grappled with one another. No, it couldn't end this way. It was not meant to be this way. The elder 
bested by the younger. No, he refused to allow it. He was light. Light was meant to burn away the shadow, to rule over darkness. And yet it was he who was overpowered, he who found his holy visage slammed into the ground, he who felt the crushing pressure pushing against the back of his head. Cracks etched themselves into his brow. This could not be. It must not be. Farewell, brother. Darkness stomped down on Light's skull, producing a horrible crunch. Once, he stomped. Then, twice. Three times now. And then there was naught but silence. All was in readiness. Salem considered the dark army she'd assembled with a smile. Indeed, as her fell gaze swept across her foul horde from the balcony of her tower, she knew she he done her work well. Soon she would marshal them forth and invade Vale, taking what was rightfully hers. Nevermore would blot out the skies. Packs of Beowulf would scour the land clean. The very seas would boil as she woke leviathans from the depths. Ozma's tower would fall, then beacon, followed by the kingdom itself. She would seize the maiden and the relic within by force as she should have done long ago. After all, if you wanted something done right, it must be done yourself. Nothing in this world could stop her. The realm would know fear and terror and despair as it had since the darker days. She would be at the center of it all, bringing death from kingdom to kingdom until she had what she desired. A pale hand rose and the teeming masses below stilled at her command. One mind. One body. One will. No meddling minions or useless pawns. Her will was their will. They would obey her and no other. The time has come. Her magically enhanced voice rang out to her creations. Tonight, we make for Vale. Tonight, we put Beacon to the torch. Tonight, Eldritch Howls answer their dark mistress. None shall stop us. Not men, not maidens, not even the gods. Someone took exception to that. An almighty flare of white light crashed down into the middle of her army, forcing Salem to fling up an arm and avert her gaze. Nevermore turned to dust in mid-shriek. Great Goliaths screamed their outrage as they died in mass under the cleansing flames. Ursi flailed at the ground as their flesh as it sloughed off, boiling away beneath the heavenly radiance that now bathed the grimlets. Her forces were decimated in an instant. There were no survivors. One million grim, all dead, butchered like cattle right down to the last Beowulf. Ash rained down from on high, mocking her every failure. Salem, a voice like thunder rattled her ears, her world, everything. Come out and face us. She scowled down at the two figures standing among the ruined wastes. Even from here, they were visible. Twin stars of gold and blue. What was this? Challengers. Two of them. How quaint. She'd not had one of those in eons. Unfortunately, her curiosity was overshadowed by all this unyielding rage. She leaped down to meet them, uncaring as her legs screamed in pain. Her injuries had already mended by the time she found her footing to face. Unfortunately, in doing so, she found herself rather closer with her would-be adversaries than she would have liked. The first was a blazing blonde rimmed in black and gold. And there, with him, a blue woman? She couldn't think of any other moniker for the scantily clad sprite before her. There was a lamp dongang loosely at her side, a staff on her back. Each shimmered with light. It made her skin crawl. And there, further behind them, a rather terrified than young woman. Poor thing. She could hear her knees knocking from here. Why had they brought her? Don't mind me. The specialist voice was a near hysteric shriek. I'm not a part of this. I'm just here to take video of this. Fair enough. She'd slaughter her later. For now, her grievance lay with them. Do you have any idea? She growled at unlikely duo. How long it took me to create those grim. Now I have to start all over again. You won't, the blue young woman declared. Excuse me. She said you won't. The young man reached behind his back and pulled out a sword of all things. You don't seem to understand. This world isn't yours to conquer anymore. The weapon trailed through the air with a mournful whine. You're done. He swept it up, and too late, Salem realized what it was. Not a sword. The sword. He was holding the relic of destruction. Comprehension broke like the dawn. If that was the sword, no. Wild red eyes snapped back to the young woman, just now noticing the intensity of the light surrounding her trinkets. The lamp. The staff. For us. This isn't war. Jin brandished the later, creating a swirl of blue light. This is pest control. I have a million grim waiting to be summoned anew. Salem scoffed, desperately stamping down the sudden surge of dread she felt. How many are you? Naruto and Jin exchanged a wry glance. Two. You would destroy me with two people? We would destroy you with one relic? Naruto countered. You're superior to us in only one respect. And what is that? Jin smiled. You are better at dying. Naruto waved the sword once in a single, devastating arc. An unseen force cut Salem out at her knees, literally, sending her sprawling to the ground. Her body screamed, even as she healed. The relic of destruction could not kill her. But it hurt. It hurt worse than any wound she had yet to endure, and she felt every second of agony as she stitched herself back together. Naruto swung down, and she flung herself to the side, only to slam into a barrier of light. Wild red eyes met Jin across the way. I'm sorry, the former genie cooed. Did you forget about me? They dared to mock her. These brats would rue the day. 
She would tear them apart inch by inch, piece by piece. A bolt of black light burst from her palm and sideswiped the blue beauty, sending her skidding back. Her eyes roved the blasted plane as she did, searching. Where was the crown? Why didn't they have the crown? Were they hiding it somewhere? They must be. She couldn't sense it anywhere. Had they concealed it? Hope warred with dread in her black. Hope at having her goals so close, and dread for what might transpire if she failed. No matter. She just had to kill these two, and... Salem was still making a plan when an invisible force yanked her forward into that blasted blonde and skewered her on his sword. The blade burst out her back as its owner held it aloft, spitting as one might a roast pig. A cry of pain fled from her lips for all of a moment before he flung her away. She was still tumbling through the air when the blade flickered, carving her in twine. Are you? But that's cheating. She thrashed her way upright, crying out as her lower half regrew. You can't have come this far. Not so soon. A shadow fell over her. Sweetheart, I'm already dead. Clenched knuckles barreled into the side of her face, sending her spinning. A ghost. I have no morals anymore. She was still reeling when a rasing and perforated her chest. I cheated to usurp the white fang. I cheated to pry Jin out of that vault. A blazing kick caught her and sent her skipping across the ground. I cheated to get the staff and my body back. I'm a ninja. I cheat. The queen recovered her wits just in time to hear the wind howl. So, Naruto snarled down at her, raising shuriken in hand. In lieu of a long-winded speech that I'm sure you won't want to hear, and frankly, because I don't care for your petulant whining anymore. His arm swung back. Salem tried to dodge. Another of Jin's walls caught her. Let's see you survive this one. Let there be light. No, not just light, but wind. Every cell in Salem's body shrieked against it. Countless blades of pure death lashed at her flesh, ripping and tearing as nothing else could. Anyone else would have perished on the spot. Salem could only imagine such a sweet release as the ruined remains of her corpse crumbled away, leaving only her head behind. Black light pooled below her neck and soon enough she regrew from that too. A hand planted itself in the soil and pushed her recovering body upright. She glowered up at him. You won't stop me. Nothing can. If I could kill you, I would. She wasn't prepared for the laughter. I'd certainly like to after all the trouble you've caused. Rather than attack, the baffling blonde lowered his stolen relic and stepped back. But apparently that's frowned upon by the gods. Having said that, you're still going to die today. I just wanted to try my hand at it first. Jin. A seed of dread took root in Salem's heart as his ally stepped forth. You're up. The woman again. What could she possibly do? I asked Ambrosius to build my friend her a really powerful body. Naruto continued, moving aside for his companion. He based her on the most powerful foe I ever fought. The ghost of a smile touched those whiskered cheeks. She was an absolute monster, let me tell you. Would you like to know her name? The seed spread its roots. Kagaya. A bright blue hand swept towards Salem's face. Something flew from Jin's palm with impossible speed. It struck the immortal in her stomach. That single solitary spike of death buried itself deep into her flesh, and she grunted in minor annoyance. The wound was shallow. Salem frowned down at it. Is that all? Naruto shook his head. See? Told you she wouldn't dodge. Why would she? Such thoughts were irrelevant. This would not stop her. She would... Why couldn't she move? Her smile became a frown as she looked down and saw her wound. It wasn't healing. Quite the contrary, it was worsening. Before her very eyes, the flesh around that wound began to flake and peel away. Cracks scrawled across her flesh, spreading further from the epicenter with each passing second. What have you done to me? All killing ash bones, he foe in tone, looking almost sad. You were dead the moment she hit you. Salem reeled back, gasping as one of her arms crumbled away to dust. He was right. This wasn't death. This was something altogether worse. This was destruction, complete and utter annihilation on a cellular level. One hadn't thought possible. They weren't just attacking her body. This was a strike at her very being. Her body began to crack and splinter. Fractures etched themselves in her face. Panic bleated in her heart. She'd gone so long without the fear of death, and its sudden return terrified her. Immortality meant nothing against this. No, she backpedaled madly, clawing at herself. This won't stop me. I cannot die. You've been alive too long. Naruto planted his relic in the ground and started forward. Rest now. A black pearl of hate blazed in her chest. As if she could do such a thing. No. Nay. Never. She wouldn't die like this. Never. I, I will, have, my revenge. Salem tried to speak further, only to find that the rod had already reached her throat. A tiny gasp fell from her lips. Her left leg buckled, sending her crashing down on her remaining knee. Still her foe crept closer, content to do nothing as she crumpled away. She swiped at him with a spell, only for it to diffuse harmlessly against his chest. Her at the end, her powers finally failed her. Wide red eyes met his at last. I don't want to die. It's all right. Naruto knelt and folded his hand around hers. Everyone dies sooner or later. You should have gone to your rest a long time ago. She snarled wordlessly at him. S.H.H. In her final moments, her killer did the one thing for her that none had, 
Not a one in quite some time. He held her. His chin came down over her shoulder as he embraced her fully. Jin joined him a moment later, pale blue arms encircling her from the other side. Salem stiffened in their grasp, eyes growing wider still. She could have hurt them, could have clawed out with her crumbling nails. Instead, she felt her rage wither like a dead rose. All her anger, all her hate, all her spite. She couldn't remember when someone had simply taken the time out of their day to hug her. And yet here her killers were, holding her closer, stroking her hair and talking to her as though she were little more than a child. It humbled her. Even as more and more of her body fell apart, her curse was unable to keep up. She fractured faster than she could heal. With each passing instant, her vision grew dark, darker, darkest. What would she find there within it? It's going to be all right. Jin cooed in her ear. Oh, you're headed to a better place. You'll see your children again. They're waiting for you. Salem stiffened. Would she? Would they forgive her for what she'd done? She hadn't dared to think of them for so long. Do you hear them calling you? Naruto's voice was a distant whisper. Go to them. She did hear them. Four little voices calling to her from above. Teary red eyes looked up and saw their faces. The last of her body crumbled away. Her world fizzled out. Thank you. Thank you. The end came not with a bang, but a sigh. Salem's body turned to ash in Naruto's arms, leaving him holding empty air. Jin lost her balance and stumbled a little, crashing into him. Her forehead came down on his shoulder. Neither moved. A warm wind tugged at them, utterly devoid of death, grim, or anything. Only silence. Jin smiled into it and laid a hand on his chest. Oh, physical bodies really are fascinating. Jin, no. Just like that, the moment was ruined. Oh, bad Jin. Fair enough. What now? The no. Naruto stood with a groan and pulled her up with him, wincing a little as his new joints ached. He'd almost forgotten what that felt like. Didn't think I'd get this far. She cocked her head, considering Salem's silent tower. To be fair, neither did I. Hey. In truth, he hadn't either. Everything had just worked out for him. Really, they were incredibly lucky. He had no idea how long this new body of his would last. Would it allow him to live a full lifetime? He felt like his old self again. No, even more than that. Ambrosius had gone above and beyond. He and Jin had gone from ghosts to gods. He could snap his fingers and kill millions, wreak untold havoc, whatever he wished. It didn't even register for him. Temptation rolled down his shoulders like so much water off a duck's back. To have a physical body was wonderful enough, yet at his core, he was never the sort to be tempted by power. Hey, I got the whole thing on camera. Harriet's distant form peeked out from behind a boulder. Can I go home now? Jin laughed into his shoulder. Such a fretful girl. Soon enough, Naruto joined her. Sure, the world wasn't quite at peace. There were other factions out there that would gladly take the chance to fight. But that too was fine. The world could carry on without him. Ashpin and Amber could pick up the pieces and salvage what was left behind. He'd done just about all that needed doing. If the gods wanted to take issue with him, they were more than welcome to come down here themselves. If he had his way, they'd never be summoned. The crown could stay with Ashpin for all he cared. Yup. Future was looking bright. Speaking of which, so he chuckled apropos of nothing about those little blue children. A spot of high color hit Jin's face, mingling with her pretty blue skin. Oh, you were serious about that? Yup. Naruto folded both arms behind his head. Pretty sure I lost most of my inhibitions when I died. Getting a body didn't bring them back, he cast a glance at Harriet as she stalked their way. Wouldn't say no to her either, come to think of it. I think we're due for a celebration, yeah? Musical laughter reached his ears. Jin's fingers threaded through his, gentle as spring. Hmm, her forehead touched his. I think I'd rather like that. You killed Salem. In the background, Amber was distantly aware of Ashbin choking on his coffee and toppling over with a dry wheeze. Under normal circumstances, she might have leaped to the headmaster's aid. Unfortunately, right now she couldn't bring herself to blink, think, or even breathe. Wait, wasn't that last one important? Her brain fizzled out helplessly beneath those words, unable to muster the will to go on. Salem was dead, just like that. The singularly most dangerous threat to Remnant eradicated. Slain forever? I can't take all the credit. Naruto folded both arms behind his head, grinning from ear to ear. Oh, none of this would have been possible without Jin and Ambrosius. Darkness also defeated Light, the former held up an azure finger. He was quite clear on that last bit. A smile wreathed her face, just a little too smug for the Fall Maiden's liking. He's unable to kill him permanently, I believe something about a rule, but he's prepared to keep slaughtering him every few thousand years or so until he learns his lesson. It was all too much to wrap her head around. It wasn't possible. No, it shouldn't be possible. No attack on Vale had come. The crown had been left to sit in its vault, utterly untouched. As days bled into a week, they realized no such attack was coming. And now they knew why. You slew her. Ashpin righted himself, gasping for air. You say that like it's an insult. Naruto crossed one leg over the other as he lounged in the throne before Amber. I thought you'd be grateful. We are Amber temporized, but really? 
She's dead? The two of you killed her. Jin nodded. She's in the afterlife with her children. Ashbin burst to his feet. Could you? Dawn. Jin snapped her fingers and the older man lurched, clutching at his chest. As Amber looked on a faint glow, suffused his skin. It lasted for all of an instant and shimmered away, motes of golden dust flickering away on some unseen breeze. Ashbin's cane clattered to the floor, but he made no move to retrieve it, for his gaze was elsewhere. His eyes remained fixed on his hands, bulging fit to burst. What have you done? He frowned at his fingers, as though only just now seeing them for the first time. My soul, it feels, light, like a burden has been lifted from it. We've removed your curse. Naruto favored him with a small smile. Oh, this will be your last life. When you die, you'll join your family in the afterlife. The ancient knight slumped to his knees with a sound akin to a gasp. And the relics? Ember prodded. What about them? I don't see them on you. Sealed away in a place of our choosing, Jin held out her hands, conjuring their spectral images for all to see. Only we know where to find them. Her cheeks dimpled in a small smile. As such, the gods will never be summoned back to this world. Ember blinked. You did all this in a week? About that. Naruto scratched his cheek. We were gone for longer than you think. No, Amber felt her frown redouble. It's only been seven days, hasn't it? I know it has. I counted. Time means little to a god. Naruto raised a golden hand. There were some loose ends to tie up, of course. We've been busying ourselves with that. Cinder and Crow were an amusing project. Jin added aside. Excuse me? You're excused. Jin beamed. Ambrosius created a pock dimension, threw them in, gave him some booze, and didn't let him out until the surly bird got her pregnant. Ember recoiled. Uh, you rewarded her for all this. You say that now. Naruto muffled a scowl behind his palm. But she'll have to raise a kid. Parenthood is a punishment, too. Now, now. Jin laid an arm on his hand. It might make her a better person. If nothing else, having twins will keep her busy for the foreseeable future. We tried that with Summer and Tai, too. Naruto's grin returned and brought reinforcements. Worked surprisingly well. Now Yang and Ruby have a little brother on the way. Ashbin croaked. Oh dear. But enough about ambiguous warriors and witches. We're starting an initiative of sorts. Jin pushed an envelope across the counter to her. Oh. Naruto insisted that you be the first we visit. Amber plucked it off the desk, frowning a little. It looked surprisingly ordinary. If one were to ignore the blue wax holding it shut. Tan fingers glided over it, frowning at the emblem etched within. Like a sword crossed in a shield, emblazoned with a lamp upon them. She gave it a shake, frowning a little when she heard something rattle within. What's in here? You will see. Naruto hummed. Just be sure to open it nine months from now. Nine months? That seems strangely specific. Okay. You don't seem to understand. Jin waved a hand in a grand gesture. All these wars? All this petty infighting? Done. It's over. Naruto crossed his arms. No longer allowed. We're putting a stop to it. To do that, we'll be gathering group of like-minded individuals. People who will prevent something a disaster like Salem from ever happening again. Folks who will stand for. Amber perked up. Oh, like a league or something. Huh? Justice League? That's one way to frame it. Naruto's subsequent smile was all teeth. Having said that, we'll be in touch. Jin leaned forward to touch her hand. It really was quite nice meeting you, but we must be going. Wait, wait, wait. Ember thrashed upright. Where? Naruto and Jin exchanged a bemused look. Our honeymoon, of course. And that's how you were born, Himawari. The little girl squinted up at her father from where she sat on his knee. Really? That's how it ended. Well, Naruto grinned and ruffled his daughter's dark hair. I suppose there's a little more to the story, if you really want to hear it. Let me tell you about your sisters. Thank you for watching. If you liked our video, please hit the like button, subscribe for updates, and follow our Twitter info in description. Credits go to the story's author, with details below. Don't miss out on our other content. Click on the suggested video for more stories and adventures. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in our next video.